Howdy, y'all. We're gonna learn about the statistical lasso, also called the lasso. Made easy. Howdy, partner. This equation ain't big enough for the both of us. We got too many variables in our equation. Too many coefficients. We got lots of coefficients. That's better. In modern statistics and data science, we often want to use lots of data to predict an outcome. We get an equation like this, where our predicted value of the outcome is a function of many predictor variables. For example, maybe we want to predict how long each cowboy can stay on their bucking bronco. Bucking bronco is a horse in a rodeo that's moving all over the place. Our prediction of how long the cowboy stays on his bucking bronco is a linear function. Beta zero plus beta one times the cowboy's weight plus beta two times the number of belt buckles the cowboy owns, plus beta three times his years of rodeo experience, plus beta four times whether or not they shout yee-haw, plus beta five times the shininess of their boots, plus lots and lots of other things that we want to use to predict how long they stay on their bucking bronco. Why do we want to perform variable selection? Why do I want to choose which variables to use? Well, not all the variables in our equation matter. We want to figure out which ones matter and only include them so we don't overfit and get bad predictions. For example, some of the variables, like the cowboy's weight and his years of rodeo experience, probably matter quite a bit for how long he can stay on his bucking bronco. But and the number of belt buckles owned, whether they shout yee-haw and the shininess of their boots, well, they may make him a respectable cowboy. They might not directly correlate to how good he is at staying on that bronco. Overfitting leads to poor generalization. If there are too many predictors relative to the amount of data, the model will start fitting to random noise rather than meaningful trends. The model might find weak but coincidental correlations in the training data and assign weights to predictors like X4, whether they shout yee-haw. These predictors won't generalize well because their relationships with the outcomes are not real. If we use all predictors, including irrelevant ones, the model might produce a near-perfect fit for the training data, but it will fail when applied to new data. Also. Having a simple model makes it more interpretable. In addition to predicting the new values better due to less overfitting, a model with less predictors is often easier to understand and interpret. I like my equation that predicts how long a cowboy stays on his bucking bronco only from the weight and experience, rather than using hundreds and hundreds of things that don't matter that make the equation so hard to understand. Now how can we select these variables? Well, let's learn about the lasso. We want to choose the best predictors. We just want to figure out the best variables and choose the optimal number of which variables to include in order to get good predictions. Well, in ordinary least squares, the only thing we care about is choosing the coefficients that minimize the sum of the squared residuals. We are trying to find the linear equation that is close to the data points. And it doesn't matter at all how simple or complex the model is. It's going to make it really complex and it's going to overfit. Now here's what we really want to do. We really want to solve what we call an L0 optimization problem, which minimizes the sum of squares, but only has perhaps three non-zero coefficients or maybe four, or maybe five, but certainly not a thousand predictors. So we want only k non-zero coefficients where k is much less than p, the total number of predictors we have available to us in the data. 
Now, there are a lot of different possible models depending on which coefficients we choose to include. There are p different models with one non-zero coefficient. There are p choose two models with two non-zero coefficients, and these numbers get really big, really fast. There are two to the p possible models to choose from if we don't know how many coefficients we want. Two to the 100th power, even, is a giant number. Our computers don't have time to fit all these models and check how well they predict new outcomes. But amazingly, this is equivalent to minimizing this one equation, the sum of the squared residuals, plus lambda times the sum of an indicator of whether each variable is zero. This counts how many non-zero coefficients there are. In a complex model, with lots of non-zero coefficients is penalized. And lambda determines how much we penalize having more predictors. A large lambda results in a simpler model. Unfortunately, this is still a very hard optimization problem. Let's try something else. The lasso loss function uses a different penalty. Notice how we've changed the penalty term. This is called the L1 penalty instead of L0. And this whole function is a lot easier to optimize. We can usually do it through a simple algorithm called gradient descent. It penalizes large, in absolute value, coefficients. This encourages the model to use smaller coefficients. We call this shrinkage. But it is not obvious at all that any coefficients would shrink to zero. But this does shrink the coefficients to zero. This is related to an idea called soft thresholding. Once a coefficient is small enough, the model just decides to shrink it to zero rather than keeping it. Yeehaw! This is related to the sharp corners of this absolute value function. And because there's a non-differentiable kink in the absolute value function, the sharp edges causes the coefficients to immediately drop to zero. This is a little confusing to understand, but I guarantee you it's true. We can also view this as sort of a budget of coefficients. You can imagine that we got a budget, and determined, that's determined by how big lambda is, for how large the sum of the absolute value of the coefficients can be. And the last so decides to spend this budget by making a few large coefficients rather than spreading the budget evenly among all the different variables. This causes variable selection. Yeehaw! Now how do we choose lambda? Yeah, we usually use a cross-validation. We hold out a part of the data set to test on and see how good the predictions are. And we choose the model that does the best on new data, not the old data, because we don't want to overfit our model. This prevents overfitting by using the new data to choose the model. Now there's a closely related method called ridge regression, but I don't want you to get these two confused. Ridge regression uses a different penalty where we square the terms. The L2 penalty in ridge regression spreads the budget a little bit more evenly. This does not set coefficients to zero. The coefficients will be shrunk because we're penalizing large coefficients, but they will not go to zero. It's still shrinkage without variable selection. This town ain't big enough for the both of us. One of us had better shrink. Oh, geez. Thank you, Mr. Lasso. You shrunk that coefficient all the way to zero. That's the end. Please like and subscribe to learn more statistics.